the moment I found washi tape, I loved it. It was an inexpensive supply and there were so many designs to choose from. They were all very collectible. The problem with me and collectible supplies is that I tend to collect more than I use. And that's how I've gotten into this situation. This is my stash of Christmas craft supplies. And this is the box they're supposed to fit into. It is day seven of trying to make as many Christmas projects as possible with my forgotten Christmas stash. And today's focus is on washi tape. If you're new to this series, here are the rules. Rule number one, each project needs to include at least one ugly Christmas pattern paper. Rule number two, no new items allowed. I'm only to use what's in my stash. Rule number three, projects need to be created in an hour or less. They need to be fun and easy to make so that you can make them too. Let's see just how much washi tape I can use as I make this layered scrapbook page. I'll be creating with mittens and mistletoe for this project. And here's a look at the photo I'm documenting. Of course, I have a plan for the washi tape. I'm going to be working with these two here and I'm gonna start by running a strip along the edge of a scrap piece of cardstock. I'm going to be working with an unusual punch today Today. This one is called a tab punch and it's actually normally used in offices, particularly in filing cabinets to label the folders. I actually use this punch quite a lot and I think you will too. I'll be sure to link it below. You could use up any of your paper scraps to do this. You do need to be aware though that the washi tape is a little bit see-through. So if you are going to cover up a pattern paper, be sure to choose one that has a very pastel print. I've found too that this technique works best when you're working with contrasting colors for your washi tape. We are going to create some rows with these in a moment and I found that it always looks best when you have colors that are quite different from each other. This project uses ideas from my 30 ways with washi tape video that I shared earlier this year. If you haven't seen that one and you have a bunch of washi tape in your stash, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Here's a look at all of my punched out pieces. The other thing I did want to mention here was that this technique works best with the wider washi tape. Ideally, you want a washi tape that is wide enough to cover the full width of your punched pieces. I am going to create a couple of rows of tabs along the bottom edge here of the layout. I've used my T-square ruler and a pencil to mark a line so that I can check that everything is nice and straight. I am gluing them down with a liquid adhesive, but I'm not applying very much glue because I am going to add some stitching here in a moment. And yes, I am being quite pedantic about everything being nice and straight. It's super important. I've added my stitching to this first row off camera and it's now time to go in with the second row. Here's where the contrasting colors come into play. So this second row is going to be green and you also might notice that I'm placing them staggered compared to the first row. You almost want to lay them like bricks. The other thing I probably should have mentioned a little earlier is that first row is centered. I actually marked the six inch mark, the center of the paper, and worked from the center outwards. With the second row in place, I can then run it through my sewing machine. Speaking of sewing machines, yes, I have been working on my sewing with paper video. I'm sorry it has been a little bit delayed. Just be sure to subscribe to make sure that you get a notification when it is ready. The third row is now in place and I do lift up the tabs a little just to create some texture. I am going to sneak in a little extra washi here on my photo mat. I'm going to run strips of washi in the same direction as the stripes on my pattern paper. 
once I place the photo on top, this detail will be quite subtle. So you will want to choose a washi tape that has a bit of shine or a special detail on it to help it stand out. You can just do one corner. I'm going to do two corners in this case, the top left and the bottom right, and that is purely decided by the direction of the stripes. I can now start to build out the design for the page. I am going to use the washi tape as an anchoring point. I do know that I want to have some kind of cluster in my photo at the bottom of the page here. I'm just not quite sure what that's going to look like. It's funny, normally I do go in with a pretty clear plan of the design and the flow for the page. But for this one, I think I was so focused on the washi tape that I kind of forgot that I also have to design the layout. I'm such a professional scrapbooker, oh dear. I don't make you watch my struggle street. I eventually decided that I would not think about that anymore and I would create a row of tabs at the top. And here you can see I do toy with the idea of actually positioning the photo on that top banner. I was thinking maybe if I had the photo at the top, I could balance that out with an embellishment cluster here at the bottom. And even watching this back now, I feel like something like that could work, just not for this layout. So here's what I settle on. I want to create a base for my photo. I don't want to put pattern paper there because that's going to look too blocky, but I did have a bunch of chipboard frames from this collection. So I'm going to cluster the frames around the edge of my photo. The other thing that becomes quite clear at this point is that I will need to add an extra row to the tabs at the top. You'll see there too that I finally nut out the flow. I'm going to keep all of my elements slightly to the right. I could have gone with a much more centered design, but I actually struggle with those. So because we're on this time frame, we're doing 12 days of Christmas together. And remember, I did say that every project should come together within an hour. I made a choice to go with the design that I was more comfortable with. I'll save that idea of a more centered design for another day. Oh yes, here's a little cheat for you. Did you notice that at the beginning of the video, I glued the tabs down with liquid adhesive and here I'm using my ATG. When you glue stuff down with a liquid glue, it is forever. You don't have the option to change your mind. And I still wasn't 200% sure that I wanted to go ahead with this extra strip. So I was able to audition it out by adding it with my ATG tape. Now, sticky tape and sewing machines are not friends. They, they do not play well together. So you do just have to be careful to add the tape, not in the area where you're going to be stitching. It does look good. I'm so glad I added it. I feel like it just finishes off that top section. One strip just wasn't enough. It is time to start embellishing and I am going to work with the largest embellishments first. If I don't lock them in early, I will actually run out of places to position them. This isn't that big of a deal when you have lots to work with because if things are too big, you can switch them out for smaller ones. When it becomes a problem is when you're working with limited supplies. So it's a really good habit to just work into your creative process. I really was keen to get that point Sienna on this page, but positioned above the photo there, it just felt too big. I do now have a plan for it and I have to be brave. I do have to trim off that left hand edge so that I can slide it in under my photo. Chopping chipboard is actually terrifying to me because it's such a permanent change. And if I decide to change my mind, well, then that piece of chipboard's always going to have that edge cut off. Are you like that? Or are you more of a caution to the wind kind of creator? Lucky for me, it did work out. And in fact, that point Sienna is going to be one of the points of the visual triangle for the page. It will be the main cluster for the page. And then I will have two supporting clusters, one to the left of the 
photo and one above the photo. At this point, the elements at the top of the page and the pieces at the bottom of the page were still feeling quite separate from each other. They could have stayed that way, but I am really about flowing embellishments. I like to really help the eye be drawn around the page. With them being separate, there was this disconnect that I really wasn't keen on. I do want to fill in that space between the photo and the top banners, but I do want it to be somewhat subtle. My trick is to use white on white embellishments. I found a mostly white sentiment to use and then two puffy stickers in the shape of snowflakes. It is somewhat of a questionable choice because there is no snow here at Christmas time, not even close to it. But I am working with what I have. We are stash busting. Things are getting serious because I'm gluing stuff down. I found a couple of banner pieces in with the puffy stickers and they actually work really well with those punched out tabs. I found one in green and one in pink, so I'm going to add both of those. And we all know that three is a fabulous number for a scrapbook layout. So I did find an extra banner in the chipboard pieces. And that's the layout done. Of course, I'll leave you here with some close up images. I want you to be able to see all of those lovely details. Tomorrow I'm using a collection I have never used before. It's been in my stash for over a year now and remains untouched. Not because it's ugly, but because I've been saving it for something special. I'm super excited about tomorrow's project and I know you're going to love it too. To find out what it is, watch this video next. I'll see you all again very soon. Until then, bye.